And we are in Ephesians chapter 1. And as I had stated last week, as we were just getting into uh, things here, that several of the verses that are in Ephesians, particularly the first chapter of Ephesians, have been used by John Calvin uh, and continue to be used by those that have been teaching for these several hundred years now uh, Calvin's doctrine uh, which is wrong there's no two ways around it that it's wrong uh, and uh, they use an acronym uh, TULIP P -U -L -I -P, and we discussed that last week and because he uses Ephesians parts of Ephesians uh, to support this doctrine uh, and I know I've covered this in the past but I want to go to it in, in a little greater depth while we are in Ephesians and so we're going to start with the first letter in that acronym this evening the T which stands for total depravity of man now Calvin's point behind this now, let's pray first before we get into that. And Father, uh, again, I pray, Father, help me to expound on this uh, in an intelligent manner, Lord, and to utilize the scriptures, Lord, and we have many scriptures this evening to look at, Father, to be able to dispel and, Lord, to tear apart Lord, the lies of Calvinistic teaching. And we pray and ask this in Christ's name. Amen. In Calvin's teaching, his point behind total depravity of man includes the fact that man is, man's will is incapable of responding to God's gift of grace unless God himself draws or not, I don't even want to say that but if God doesn't give him the capacity to do so then according to his theology it's impossible for a human being of their own will to decide to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. Which is, you know, again, this, this is really the key of the whole thing, because everything else will fall apart uh, if it can be proved that man has a free will that he can exercise. So, again, Calvin's teaching is that and we'll come to it in more depth as we go along, but that men are arbitrarily chosen by God, were chosen by God, before he ever even created anything, uh, the individuals that he decided would be righteous, he chose, and he only deals with them. The others are uh, irreparably uh, condemned, to damnation forever because God didn't choose them. And so only those individuals whom God has chosen is God going to draw and give them the capacity to choose to accept Christ, whether they want to or not. <laughs> yeah. And that then only after they have been saved do they have a free will to choose or or one way or the other? Prior to that, you know, there, man has no will 
to do good at all, according to his teaching. So we're going to look at the truth of this in the scriptures, and we're going to look at a lot of scripture tonight, so I know you're going to feel like, you know, Bible drills here, <laughs> going through. But the reason why I want to have such a copious amount of scriptures is I want to go through, and we're going to be looking Old Testament and New Testament in this, uh, to prove the fact that God created man with a free will and that even after man fell, that free will continued. And so man had the ability to choose of his own free will. We're going to begin in the Gospel of John 3, 16 to 21. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, that's all-encompassing, that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So all-encompassing the world, whosoever means anybody, all-encompassing. Okay? For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world. Okay? So he sent his Son so that the whole world would have the opportunity to have salvation but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So if God sent Christ into the world for the whole world so that the whole world can be saved, and some have believed and some have not, there's somebody's will at work there. And it's not God, then, if he sent Christ for the whole world. And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. They're making a choice. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light. Okay? So he's doing truth before he's come to the light. That his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. Well, that doesn't sound to me from that verse like people don't have a free will. How about Acts chapter 8? Acts chapter 8, verses 36 and 37, Philip and Ethiopian eunuch. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Philip saith, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Now the, the Ethiopian eunuch once he was given the information from Philip make a decision or a choice or did God make a choice for him now based on John 3 16 to 21 the Ethiopian eunuch made a choice but let's keep going <laughs> go to Romans chapter 3 verse 3 for what if some did not believe Okay. Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Go down to verse 21 through 24. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. And well, again, John 3:16 through 21 tells us that Christ died for all, and that all have that opportunity. Verse 22, keep going. 
for all have sinned, excuse me, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, like the Ethiopian unit. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So everybody's under the condemnation. And Christ died for everyone who's already under the condemnation, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Go to the next chapter, Romans 4, pick it up at verse 16 to the end of the chapter. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. Okay, what is our faith? What are we... Okay, you're exercising faith. You are, like the Ethiopian eunuch, told about the grace of God, told about the sacrifice that the Lord Jesus Christ has made for everybody. You receive the facts. You choose to believe the facts, and you exercise faith in the facts. And when you exercise faith, God responds to your faith with that grace. And via God the Holy Spirit, who is the active agent in the process of salvation, all the different things that happen when you are saved occur at that instant. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, and not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, before whom he believed even God, who quickened, quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. And there's an awful lot of things going on here in the mind of Abraham. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Now you think about it. If God arbitrarily chose Abraham back before he ever created him, why does Abraham even have to exercise anything? He's been chosen. <laughs> Whether he knows it or not, He's been chosen. So there's where where does faith even come in to that? And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. So it's dependent upon something. Okay? It's dependent upon us doing something. Okay, back in the tulip theory, that you that will be coming up is unconditional election. Well, no, it says here that there's a condition that you have to believe and exercise faith. Okay, that requires you making a choice and a decision. Okay? But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses, and was raised again for our justification. Staying in Romans, go to chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, pick it up at verse 8, and we'll go down to 15. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thine heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Well, if you were chosen 
in eternity. Why do you got to do anything? Again, that's his whole point with unconditional election. You don't have to do anything. There's no requirement. Well, here there's a requirement. You've got to act on information. You have to make a choice. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Well, let's say you believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Jesus Christ is the Savior. Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God, but you weren't chosen. Then I guess there's going to be some shame. <laughs> it says here if you believe, there, there, that, that there's not going to be any shame. If you put your... Uh, under Calvin's warped mentality, it doesn't matter how much you approach unto God, how sincere your heart is, how much you desire salvation. If he didn't pick you, too bad. Crazy stuff. Verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Okay. How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Okay, well, they can't believe unless they've heard. Okay. They've got to know. They've got to receive the information. How shall they hear then without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Okay. They need to hear the gospel. Somebody has got to tell them. Well, why do they need to hear it and believe it and exercise faith in it if they were arbitrarily chosen by God and there's no requirement to do anything? You're going to be saved whether you want to be or not. Or you're going to go to hell whether you're trying to be saved or not. Right. So, I mean, we're only six passages of scripture in and we pretty much already tore a big hole in it. We ain't done yet. <laughs> Let's go to Galatians. Galatians chapter 3 verses 6 to 9. Even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith the same are the children of Abraham. So the child, we're talking spiritual things here. I mean, I'm not physically a child of Abraham, neither are you. We're talking spiritual things. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, And these shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Abraham is the father of faith. Before he received the covenant of circumcision, he's not even a Jew. Okay, he's still a Gentile at this point. Jews don't come around until the twelve tribes. He's a Hebrew because he's the descendant of Heber. He is a Hebrew, okay. but that's an ethnicity. It's got nothing to do with uh, religion. He doesn't have the law. Okay. You know, we talked about that in Sunday school there about uh, receiving of, of dispensation, receiving of revelation and how Abraham received a specific revelation for him and his offspring there of circumcision. Well, that happened after he had already been counted righteous by God by his faith. He believed what God said. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's try Ephesians here, where we're currently studying. But we're going to go down Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to 20. We haven't come to those verses yet. 
in our study because we've really only begun, but it says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of your calling, and that the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word, who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. The key here being that ye may know what is the hope of your calling. Okay, What's the hope of the calling? Again, as we go through here, we're going to find that they are predestinated under the adoption of children by Jesus Christ, that's verse 5, and that we are uh, predestinated to be conformed to the image of Christ. Okay? God's will in time past was that those who got in Jesus Christ are those that are the ones who are called. But it's a choice you are going to make. You know, again, the, the process. A sinner hears the word of God. John 5, 24. Back to the Gospel of John. John 5, 24. You hear the Gospel. Lord speaking, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death unto life. He, receiving the facts, believes the gospel. Romans 10 again. Back there. Romans 10. And we're looking at verses 14. The 17, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him on whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. Oops. Obedience is a choice. <laughs> They have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word. Okay, you hear, and you choose to obey, and choose to to believe. He trusts Jesus Christ as his Savior then at that point. First Timothy. Uh, in fact, while we're in Romans, go to Romans uh, 3 and 4. We also read those. For they be... Whoops. Yeah, 3 and 4 there. Romans 10... Yeah. Verses 3 and 4, yeah. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness... And going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. You submit yourself. That's something you choose to do. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Then go to 1 Timothy 4.10. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 10, For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of oops, all men, especially those that believe. Salvation has been provided for all men. Okay. But there's a requirement. Your belief. 
your faith. And then he is then sealed in Ephesians 4.30 by the Holy Spirit of God. Ephesians 4, verse 30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. That being the day of full redemption, when we receive our glorified bodies. So, if you were chosen before God ever created anything to go to heaven, Why all the different processes necessary? Why aren't you... I mean, you're already going to heaven whether you want to or not. Why don't you get sealed until after you make a profession? Not very logical. Not at all. You know, let's look at some examples of people responding to the Lord, responding to God, and see whether or not they did so by free will, or because God caused them to do so over their own will. Genesis chapter 2, <laughs> right to the very beginning, Genesis chapter 2, 15, 16, and 17, and the Lord took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. But why has he got to give him a commandment? If he doesn't have a will of his own, why is he giving him a commandment? Why is he saying, Don't do this, do this? Why, he said, if you do this and you're not supposed to do this, there's going to be a consequence if he doesn't have free will of his own. Well, he hasn't fallen yet. Okay. No problem. Go to Genesis chapter 4. <laughs> Genesis, and we're, we're definitely after the fall here. Yeah. 3 through 10, in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? Why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Now in all of that, we find number one. God had already told him what was acceptable. Cain made a choice to not do what God had said was acceptable. And he got mad when God wouldn't accept it. And he accepted Abel's because Abel did. Okay? God said, do this. Abel did what he was told. He obeyed. Cain didn't. How come Abel's will was good and Cain's will wasn't? <laughs> then, God says, look, don't get mad. Okay? But unto Cain and to his offering he had no respect, and Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? Why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted. He says, Look, get it right. Get it right, and I'll accept you. He's got to make a choice. I, mean, I don't know how you can get around that. <laughs> Noah. Chapter 6. 
Pick it up in verse 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. Well, did he do it because that's how he was programmed? Or did he make a choice? And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Okay. God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Now get this. Mark, excuse me, make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make into the ark, and shalt pitch it within, without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make of it. And it goes on. Okay. God's given him directions. God's given him commandment. Why? Why does he have to? Does Noah have a choice? He can choose to obey God or choose to not obey God. Abraham, we talked about Abraham. Go to chapter 12. Abraham, chapter 12, first two verses. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. He's giving him commandment. He's giving him direction. Why does he got to give him direction? <laughs> you know, if he can make choice. We'll go down through a few more people here, and then we'll have to pick it up again next week for time. Moses. Our buddy Moses, Exodus chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. Here's, here's, and you know, all Moses, a great man of God, Moses, yeah. Chapter 3, verse 10 and 11. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children? Of Israel out of Egypt. Hold on here. Didn't God just tell you to do something? You automaton, you. Yeah. Obey. God keeps saying enter. It's not doing it. <laughs> Stupid program's not working right. <laughs> uh, chapter 4, verse 1. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, The Lord has not appeared unto thee. Verse 10 in the same chapter, And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. Man, this guy is trying hard to not do God's will. <laughs> Great Moses. That's a choice. Uh, go to Numbers. Chapter 20. Numbers 20, verse 7 through 13. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water. And thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock, so thou shalt give the congregation and their beast drink. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before.